So you are a new DM and you feel like your notes are not up to speed? Well then watch this video to make sure your notes are not missing any of these things. It will make your life so much easier, I promise. So before we start, this is my first video, so hop in the comments to say hi and make sure to check out my channel over at Twitch for some great streams. I stream D&D content, note making, and I play a bunch of different games with the boys and I'd love to hang out with you as well in the chat. So yeah, check it out. Have a world map for your playable area, for real. It makes things so much easier. Not just for you, by the way, but for your players as well. There are some awesome tools to quickly piece together a world map. Incarnate is what I personally use and I enjoyed creating a world map for my campaign so much. During the campaign, make sure you keep expanding on it. Most platforms where you can create a world map allow you to edit it later on as well. Pin down places known to your players, so you always have the map on hand and make a legend for it. You have no idea how many times I just open the world map in my notes to quickly access the map and have an overview of all the names of towns and villages that would otherwise be completely forgotten. You can even hand it to your players so they can take notes on the map directly later on. It gives them ways to plan ahead, so yeah, having it in your notes will give you a powerful tool to make your world more concrete, relatable and accessible for you and your players. Okay, this one is huge as well. Number two, important places. Once you have a map done, start pinpointing the cities and towns and villages that are important. The ones you'd like your players to visit, where they can pick up quests, lore and so much more. It is when you will put the pin on your map that you'll know what's in the city. It will be so much easier for you to later on have an NPC mention the place for a specific reason, maybe they know someone with a job who lives in the nearby town, or maybe your players could be really interested in a magic shop, or maybe you have a rogue in your party that would be extremely interested in that one thieves guild in the capital. But to do this, you need to have that little central hub pointed out on the map and you need to expand upon it. And that's when you go into more detail. When you think your players will be ready to go to the city, spend some more time flashing it out. Find pictures as references so it's easier to describe the place. Work out what feeling there is to the inn, for example, and work out what shops could be particularly interesting for your players. Is there a temple for your cleric? Is there a library for your wizard? And this leads us straight to the next point, number three. Make sure you know how the NPCs will behave in that specific place. Of course, I'm not saying to create and flesh out the hobby and interest of every single townsfolk there is. Get a general feeling down for how most of the common people will behave with your party or around them and then move on. What you need to flesh out though is specific NPCs, this is very important. For real, sit down, think about them. The innkeeper is a good one to start with because, okay, let's be real, the inn is always the first place the party goes to, always. So just start with him. Write down bullet points about unique features you can describe. Start with just a few bullet points you can describe to the players about how he looks, a few quick points about his behaviorism. This doesn't need to be super detailed, but at least a bottom line so you don't have to improv absolutely everything that's going on. Then you move on to the topics he will talk about with the party. Let him tell them something special about the city maybe, or about his inn, or about one of the guests that just piqued his interest making have interests as well. Warwick, how do I flesh out every single NPC I need? So many. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I, I don't know. Let's do it. Okay, listen here. This is how to quickly know about your NPC's behavior, okay? Ask yourself this one question. What is this guy's motivation? What does he live for? And that's all you need. Maybe it's something simple like, does he only want to make money? If so, that's fine. This will always give you a guideline. He will work to achieve his goal and you always know what he would answer to a question because he's always have his mind set on this one goal. This is the easiest way to have NPCs fleshed out with just one simple detail that you need to think about maybe five minutes. So flesh out your NPCs, give all the ones you think your party will want to talk to a good motivation and then pick the important ones and make them unique. Then pick some of those and maybe give them a hook. Do it, it works. Just try and you'll see. Stop improvising your whole sessions. It, it really can go downhill very, very quickly. It's 
dangerous territory, to, to me at least. I don't know, maybe it works for you, but it doesn't for me. I, I improv as well, but no, not everything. I like my notes, I really, really like them. So let's move on to number four, the main events. Okay, probably you already kind of do this, but if not, then you are really missing out and you really should. Once you know your important places and important NPCs, work out where and who will advance the plot when the party meets them. Bonus points if you can put that NPC in various places and he's not tied to one single location. Yes, sometimes it can be necessary, for example, for the party to go to the inn to trigger one specific event, but many times you can put an NPC in different places and the outcome will be exactly the same. So write down what should happen. Make bullet points. Will the party find out about the BBG as they meet one of his men in the inn? Or will they be drinking and having fun before a dark night joins the tavern as the atmosphere goes dark and the bards stop playing? Everyone looking at the figure as he approaches the poor innkeeper to collect an exuberant sum of money. These are your hooks. Make sure they're well planned and described. Tell your players how the night opens the door and the room gets darker as the wind from the outside dims the candlelight. There is a simple reason why you have to write these things down and it's actually pretty important. The more you describe something, the more the players are going to notice it and remember it. So have the main points down, maybe even write out the whole dialogue between the baddie and the innkeeper. Uh, just, just be a little careful if you want to do that, because an interaction can go completely different from what you had planned if the party interferes with the dialogue and then if it happens, there's two things you can do. You either try to move the conversation back on topic or you just roll with what the players did. Usually it works better if you just roll with the players. They're gonna have more fun if they have more say in what's going on, so just be careful when you write down things word per word and then read it out. I find it better to have bullet points usually, let's say like that. All right, on to number five. Okay, for real. I cannot live without a cheat sheet for NPC names. So, you had your main NPC detailed down and ready to be used, but then, Mr. DM, is there a blacksmith in town? Uh, yeah, sure, there is one. Yeah, I'd like to go there. Um, yeah, sure. You can find him easily in his workshop. He's currently working on a greatsword, and his muscular arms seem to be well trained and have probably been working on the anvil for many years at this point. Hey there, buddy. My name is John Sinar. Oh, hi there. Nice to meet you. My name is... Um... Uh... My name is... Uh... Timmy. I'm Timmy. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. For real now. How many times does it happen to you that your players will want to interact with a random person and you had no idea they wanted to talk to them? It happens all the time. This is why you need a list of names for your NPCs. Besides, I really don't want to have all my random NPCs be called Timmy. It happens way too often already. So what I personally do is I go into my notes and have one page filled with names for NPCs to use on the fly. I have sections for different races that the party might meet. Remember, every race has different guidelines when it comes to naming. You will probably not make a snobby elf na named something like Droktar. So make sure to subdivide the way that fits your world best. I have my own lists personally subdivided uh, by race and the names are just randomly generated with tools you can easily find online. I'll leave a link in the description for the generator I use the most. Then. Once the party meets an NPC and you use the name, you just cross it out from your list and make sure you don't use the name for a while. After that session, make sure though that you transcribe that name into your notes and implement it into the rest of the stuff that you've written down so that you will remember in future that, well, okay, the blacksmith was called 
Timmy or something. So it doesn't change every time they meet them. And that's how you easily go from an improvised NPC to a potentially reoccurring character in your campaign. Like maybe the shopkeeper they love the most. I had this happen. You can too. Alright, number six. Random encounters and events. I used this one an insane amount, way more than I initially thought. It's simple. Take some time to write down a few of these. You won't need a thousand of them, just small random events that could happen along the way. Maybe the party gets mugged. Maybe a drunken person starts talking to them about some random stuff that they're not even interested in. Maybe they come across an abandoned temple. Who knows? It could be anything. But work out these social encounters. The beauty of them is that they can come up whenever you need them. They should be designed specifically for the purpose of making travel or downtime more interesting for your players. They give depth to your universe and make it feel alive. Mine are usually just a few minutes long, maybe just a few words that can be exchanged, but they serve as great fillers for the somewhat more tedious moments of session. For me, it's very rare that they actually trigger a quest, but they can, depending on how interesting the encounter is for my players and how well it fits in the moment. Be open-minded with them, but I assure you, your players are gonna love your city so much more with these simple, quick, but special and unique situations they find themselves in. And who knows, maybe that's how they find out your next big secret as well. Okay, and this leads us to our last entry, number seven. Okay, hear me out. You need a section where you can put down your quick notes during session. Again, make sure you understand this. Make it sink in. You need a section where you can write out quick notes. Listen, I don't care how and where, just take a sheet of paper and a pencil and whenever you improvise a name, put it down there. Whenever your party mentions something you didn't think about, put it down there. Whenever you get a new idea, put it down there. This is not meant to be a section of your notes that you prepare beforehand. This is the section of your notes that might be one of the most important though. It happens on the fly, just quick bullet points. I have mine on my tablet, which I always have out while we are playing, and I use the tablet almost just for these quick notes. But it doesn't need to be a tablet, just a sheet of paper, as I said, anything that you can quickly write something down on. As I said, I have that section of my notes always open when we play and maybe I use it to keep track of death saves from my players or specific crowd control that they used or what they roll on their stealth check for later reference. And at the same time, these scribbles serve the purpose of helping me prepare for next session. Let me give you an example of how I use this. One of my players has lost his memory. Every time he shows a specific habit, I write it down. When he mentions something to the other players, I write it down. And from that, I then work out little bits of memory that he will remember of his previous life, which the player himself has no idea about. And let's be real. I don't have an idea about it either. I have a general gist of it, but I never know what mannerisms he comes up next with. And let me tell you, he loves it. And it's only possible to do something like this if I take those quick notes. And let me clear here, they are untidy, rough and very hard to look over, but they are there. This is when the magic comes in. It's after session that they get to be so much more useful. Because that is when I work them out and move them over to the sections of my notes where I put down the stuff that I prepare. So yeah, use it. It's important. All right, guys, and this concludes this video. Tell me, have I opened your eyes to some specific things you might want to try out in your games? Have I motivated you to put a bit more effort into your own note making and optimize your time as a DM? Or do you have any secret tips to improve your notes even further? Then let me know in the comments down below and leave a like if this video helped you out. Also, remember to subscribe and ring the bell if you don't want to miss more DMing tips, tricks and guides that I'll probably put out in the future on this channel. Remember to come say hi and chat over on Twitch whenever I'm live. Link is in the description and have fun with your D&D games.